Welcome to the Loveland Report and Lona Ranger Show. I am Cleve Loveland, Central Florida's real estate planner, alongside Bruce Woodburn, the loan arranger. We're going to give you all of your real estate and mortgage news. We're going to have some listings to talk about. I'm going to dive into, I got some talking heads out there. I guess the election stuff's kind of slow. So they're saying real estate's in a recession. We're going to talk about that, which is not true. Also, we're going to talk about how prices are up. And we're also going to talk about planning. What do you do when you've got a house and you're building a new home? We're going to talk about some different options on that later in the show. And also I've got some, like I said, I got some listings, um, all kinds of listings. I'm going to have time for all of them this show, but Bruce, what do you have? Well, we've got debt consolidation because it seems to be really popular right now. I'm assuming that inflation has gotten a hold of people's budgets and they're really looking at a lot of debt consolidation. Then we've got first time home buyers and what type of programs may be available for first time home buyers. And then we go to the other end of the spectrum and we've got physician loans and bank statement loans for self-employed people that, you know, just don't want to show the government they made a lot of money, that I want to pay a lot of taxes. So I want to talk a little bit about those specialty programs. And then what what is the state of the, of, the, uh, of the industry right now? What's going on, not only in our industry, but what's going on with interest rates and what can we expect? It's interesting, Cleve, how many different people have their opinion on what's going on with interest rates right now. And they just don't know. And well, nobody really knows, but I think I've got a pretty good uh, finger on the pulse right now. And I can see that we're going to stay relatively steady where we are right now, probably till we get closer to the election. I just don't see a yeah. lot of movement. Well, it's, it's funny. I got an article here about how, um, you know, how's the, how's the election going to affect the housing market? And, you know, no matter who's in, who's out, whatever's going on, houses still sell. Families still grow. Yes, marriage happens. Do. Divorce happens. Uh, you know, people, people going get into, raises, people, people lose die. Jobs. Yeah. All yep. that stuff. So uh, that, that happens there. Now, what I would just say about the election, think about this. Do you want more expense and more inflation or do you want a good businessman in charge of everything? And that's all I'll leave it at that. Cause that will help real estate and people feel right now. People don't feel confident because yeah, we think rates are going to go down and they've stabilized. They were worse last year or it, we were at 8%. Now we're at seven still, right? Well, seven, but, even in the high sixes. Yeah. And so it's, that's where it's, but the prices are going up and that's, I mean, and so that's going to continue. There's a shortage all around the country. And that's what cracks me up when these people on TV say real estate, is it in a recession? Are we doing badly? Is there, there could be economic, you know, turmoil. actually a recession is not bad for real estate. Yeah. So, um, but it's just all the numbers I see and everything happening is that no, it's not in a recession. There are the number of sales now and what the media, always remember the media is grabbing headlines. They want clickbait. They want you to not change the channel, but the number of sales we have now is equal to what we had in Florida in 2018, 2018, 2017, yeah. right yeah. around there. And rates were better. So Florida still grows. Um, our population still grows as people move here and central Florida grows as people from other parts of Florida move here. I say that all the time. That's, that's the most buyers I see Bruce when I don't see 75% of the time it's going to be a local person buys your house. 20% of the time it's going to be somebody else from central Florida I'm doing my math, right? Uh, somebody, excuse me, somebody else from Florida, right. somewhere else that's more expensive than us, which isn't hard, just go to the either beach, east or west coast, or 5% of the time, maybe somebody from out of state. Absolutely. Or, or investor, so. but, but you know what? The thing is, is that property moves constantly. I mean, my phone is ringing off the hook right now from anything from doctor loans, self-employed, debt consolidation, uh, first-time home buyer, down payment assistance. Uh, I've got a couple of condos on the beach that I'm financing right now. Um, I've got a big house in Miami that I'm doing a loan for right now. So it's just all over the board, but the, the activity is there right now. So people are tired of sitting around. I mean, come on, we, you, let's look at it. Since March of 2022, our industry slowed down, but what it didn't do is drop in price. It was an astronomical pace too. That was like a record pace for 2021. It, it was and too much. Yeah. It was too much. You know, pe during COVID, I mean, uh, those were the, those were the glory days, but they weren't realistic. They weren't any more realistic than a 3% interest rate. It's just not common and yeah. you can't expect those kind of things to happen. Yep. And it's not healthy. Actually. I don't think the low interest rates were all that healthy. It's third, the market, you know, I closed a lot of transactions, but I don't think it's healthy overall because people get used to those low interest rates, Cleve. And then when they go up to a normal interest rate, they think the normal is high. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that, I don't at. think yeah. it's healthy. Yep. So, and also I've got some stuff here, Bruce, on how home prices hit an all new high 
in December. They are up over nationally up 5.5%. Holy to moly. The previous year. And that's yeah, those for all you people out there that thought we were going to have a crash in the market. Yeah. 5.5%. I know some that have been waiting since like 2008 saying, you know, oh no, I'm, I'm just going to go again. 2010. Nope. We're going to have another crash. So don't be scared and live in your mom's basement. Um, and there are basements in Florida. I've sold some. So, but I mean, prices all around the country up 5.5% on average and the tens they use big they use big cities too um the big cities prices actually rose seven percent that's so, incredible yeah and that's this is even using like los angeles you know san francisco those cities they got if it's over five million they got a tax on them now right old old, old gavin newsom you needs it for hair products your so next he president taxes, so yeah right <laughs> um so anyway so it's real estate's a good investment we always talk about that here and i just think it's just something everybody needs to look at and then you know you want to talk about planning helping your kids it's out the easiest way for you building. to accumulate money it's at, i just want you guys to think about this out there how many of you are are involved in a 401k in other words your company offers you a 401k if you are offered a 401k and you don't take advantage of that you're making a huge mistake because of the tax benefits to that savings even if the company does not contribute you must max out your 401k second greatest way to accumulate wealth uh, matter of fact the first way is real estate because you have to live somewhere anyway you might as well let that real estate accumulate in value so my biggest mistake was not buying enough properties and selling too many properties i think you and i can agree with that wouldn't we oh yeah yeah so what we would have done much better if we had more so more is better keep buying real estate and i would say a measured pace you know i went all in in 06 right wrong time and then i was strapped couldn't buy any in 2010 because i had too many already so it's i think just our leapfrog your your, your leapfrog program you you coined that phrase and, and developed that um but just buying the primary move again buy and rent the first one buy another primary do that five times over 10 years, 15 years, you've got a, what's it come out to like a $4 million portfolio. You've got about $4.3 million producing you producing about $30,000 in income, 25 to $30,000 in income. Yep. If you can't retire on 25 to $30,000 in income, you've got a spending problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we've also got, I want to talk a little bit about self-employed people because it's tax season. You know, my favorite time of the year, I think it's time tax season is like root canal season. So nobody likes it, but we all have to deal with it. But here's for all you self-employed people. If you're self-employed, you own your own company, 25% or more then you are self-employed. It doesn't matter if you pay yourself a W2, but if that is you, and you want to purchase or refinance a home, you know the challenges that you're up against when you go to a bank or a mortgage company for financing. So you have a choice. You either show more income and pay more taxes, or you, um, you uh, get a program that accommodates self-employed people, like my bank statement program, my asset depletion program. So these are designed to help people that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to write off most of your 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 expenses and you're just not going to show the income so you need a program that'll accommodate you i'll take 12 months bank statements i'll average the deposits and i'll use 50 percent of those deposits as income and you qualify it's not a problem at all we do it every day so you either pay the taxes get a traditional mortgage or you don't pay the taxes and you get a non-traditional mortgage and they're not ridiculous. They're a little bit more expensive in interest rate, but, and they're a little bit higher in down payment. You're not going to do a 5% down bank statement program, but the pro the, the fact of the matter is, is that you look at somebody that made $400,000 and on their tax returns, it shows that they made 50. Well, they saved $90,000 in taxes. So what if you pay a little higher interest rate, right? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. You get into yep. the house. Yep. So oh. those are the things that if you've got questions on, you'd like to talk to a professional, Cleve and I are here in the studio today. You can reach the Loan Arranger right now at 407-250-9144. That's 407-250-9144 or webringyouhome.com. Cleve Loveland and his team, they're available today as well. I know Nanette's out and about selling property today. I got another lead from her today from a client. Cleve can be reached right now at 407. 
877-352-8118 or clevelovelandcom Yeah. So, all right, next on the list, what do you got there? You got one of your crazy emails or you want to? Uh, no, I've got, um, I want to talk about how uh, the, you know, with the price is rising, now's the time to get in. And, don't, and, and these people that hesitate, I just think it's so important they be in touch with you and be ready, perched and ready, ready like a, like a, buzzard on a power line. So there is a step for that. If you're going to, if you're going to uh, feel like you'd like to negotiate a transaction, like who doesn't want to get the best deal when they buy a house, that means you must position yourself. You can't look willy nilly and then negotiate at the same time. You have to look in the eyes of the seller to be as fully qualified and as close to a cash buyer as you can possibly be. That's the way you position yourself. Now, does that mean you have to have perfect credit and 20% down? No, it doesn't. It means that the lender needs to have all of your documents and make a commitment to the loan. In other words, I've got your W-2s, your taxes, your divorce decree, whatever it is that I needed, and I've physically underwritten the loan through my fast track program. If you do that, I guarantee the seller that I will close you in 30 days or less. And most of those I'm closing in 21 days or less, but I'll guarantee the seller an on-time closing, or I'll pay the seller up to $500 a day for every day. I miss you. Have, I don't know why you mentioned that you've never had to do it. Well, I've had to do it once. Okay. Years and years. I've ago. had to do it not once on me. a USDA it wasn't on you, but, but no, I'm not going to tell you. I would perfect. I missed, you know what I missed? It was a USDA deal and nobody told me that it was on well and septic. And I got the, well, I got the septic tag analysis in time to make the closing, but the well analysis has to go through a laboratory and culture and I missed one day in the oh, culture wow. and it caught, yeah. it caught, but you know what well, though? I paid up, but realtors, I can't say enough about how many deals you've rescued for me. You know, I, I pick, I call and pick your brain when I get some of these weak, weak, weak pre-approval letters. And I tell the realtor, please, please just call Bruce. Your client's being misled here. You know, I want to make sure there's a loan here before we sign your, like I'll negotiate an offer and I talk to the other loan rep. And if I can't get a call back or I get silence on the phone, when I say, have you, got all the docs in from the buyer if you is this totally approved and the closing date says 30 days are you sure you can make that and i get silence on the phone and just heavy breathing i just i'm like i, I tell the realtor like you need to call bruce i mean i know with you the loan will be done and you say yes or no there's a loan here i can tell you in a couple of days i tell you when i have this this and this you, you're very specific about what you do absolutely and and here's the thing we were talking about a a, a letter that you got with pre-approval uh just the other day that said it was still subject to income and assets. Well, that's not a pre-approval. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's nothing. They said they make a million dollars a year, but I haven't verified. That I haven't yet. seen it yet. I haven't quite verified. I don't know that. where it is. Uh, he sent me a briefcase of a picture of a briefcase full of cash, right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, come on, you guys. It, it, and I will tell you one of the biggest, one of the biggest gripes I get from clients is that I ask for a lot of documents up front, and I'm not gonna make any apology for that because that is designed to protect you. 67% of people that are getting a mortgage do not close on time and are dissatisfied with the process. Do you wanna be one of them? Because I don't want you to be one of them. Matter of fact, I'd rather you go to your bank or your credit union and let them screw it up and then come to me and have the deal fall apart. I don't, that's embarrassing for me. For me to call a realtor and go, yeah, I need an extension on the contract. We're just not ready yet. To me, that means I failed and I can't fail that. I, that's, that's, that's embarrassing. Well, the only complaint I get from about you, Bruce, is, is my, my buyers will say, Bruce wants so much information. I'm like, you need to get it to him now. Yeah. Do not mess around for with sure. that. Get it to him now. Stop fussing and get well, it. You know what? It's either I get it from you up front or I nickel and dime you just before the closing when the, when the when all the furniture's on but the But you're truck, negotiating the power. Pay, here's, and here's the thing, Cleve, you've heard it before. I got painters lined up for Friday. I got this lined up. I got the yeah. movers. I, yeah. My dog's in the groomer. I don't want that to happen. Listen, we got 30 seconds left here. When we come back, what do you got for I'm gonna us? I'm going to talk about, I got a couple listings. We're going to talk about negotiating and um, we'll go through those. Yeah, and I want to talk about positioning yourself properly to be the winning offer. And if you're a real estate agent, you won't want to miss this. If you want to buy a home, you've got to stay tuned. Cleve and I will be back in five minutes, 407-250-9144 or webringyouhome.com. Loveland Properties, 407-352-8118.